So, you know, when people say, Mark, you get worked up about it, you get angry, you get bitter, all of those things. Yes. Because what are these people doing? The answer is absolutely nothing. And that's the problem. And you're <laughs> damn right. I'm going to be bitter about that because I've given my life up. I have given up my life to bring this information to people. Then you have other people that they hear a bit, a tiny piece of information and they then they don't even bother to go to your site to look at what, what kind of a body of knowledge is there. And they ask the most ridiculous of questions like, do you have any information about mind control? No, I don't have any information about mind control. You heard a, a half an hour interview I did, and that's the question. You go right to my contact page on my website. You click that, you know, and, and that's the first question that you ask. You didn't bother to even look at the site. Uh, no, I don't have any information on mind control. I just spent a year and a half of my life breaking it down for people. A year and a half of my life to put shows together that deeply explain it and go through all of the methodologies that it's that are involved with it. But I no, I don't have any information on mind control. <laughs> this is who we're dealing with, people. These are the people who are who who people will say their hearts in the right place. They 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 want to do the right thing. They want to learn. This is this is who's on our team. This is who we have on our team. You know what this is? This is this show is and always has been a comedy hour. It's a, it's a comedy show for the dark occult, laughing, say, saying, "Look at what he's doing for nothing," pissing themselves, laughing. People think we're going to be free. You think we're going to be free? It's a big goddamn joke. People who think that they're a big goddamn joke. And that's all I have to say, you know, on this topic. What I want to go through, and again, that's not the reason I even do this. I don't even do this because I think humanity is magically going to be free. I do this because I'm speaking the truth and I serve truth. That's the force I serve. I do not serve human beings. I don't even like human beings. Okay? I think human beings are devolved golems the most the 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 vast majority of them on this planet there are some very good beings on this planet who are truly working to help other people understand to help get the truth out there to people to serve truth okay there are some people who really understand true freedom i consider them my brothers and sisters in this war but most people are degenerated animals and they deserve what happens to them. The problem, the moral issue that I have is that they're dragging other people into that total cesspool of suffering with them. If they could do it, it's very unfortunate that we're all one and we're all connected. Very unfortunate because if we could somehow separate from that dross, from that chaff, that isn't even really true humanity. I don't know what it is. It's again, it's some degenerated animalistic golem. Uh, then it would be great because they could have what's coming to them and we could have what we really truly should have, which is true freedom and a world that is governed by the principles of non-aggression and actually then turn our lives over to doing what we really want to be doing instead of doing this, which is saying the same thing over and over again, over and over again to a bunch of ignorant asses who don't even want to understand or know. And that's not what I consider good quality of life, quite frankly. You know, and you say, well, that's selfish. Yeah, it is. There's nothing wrong with me wanting my life to do what I want with it instead of having to say the same thing over and over again to people who really don't want to understand it. I'm doing this because I am not going to let truth be lost in the world. And this is why other people are really doing it. They have a responsibility to truth, which is a responsibility that is higher than a responsibility to any other human being, including one's self, lowercase s. My responsibility to myself does not supersede my responsibility to the truth. And which is why I'm going to keep talking. Don't think I'm going away. But I am pulling back my 
contact with other people. So um, new material will be going up. Th this will be in a regular podcast format. Okay, so don't look for it every the same time every week. You'll have to just check the website every now and again, and new episodes, you know, will be going up. Um, again, I may do another podcast tomorrow. I may do another. I, I may do two podcasts this week. I may not do a podcast this coming week. I may, you know, do one next weekend. I may, I may do six in a month. I may do one or two in a month. It's going to be on my schedule when when the urge strikes me, and. Again, it's going to take on a little bit more of a targeted and um, focused format. So that's all the venting and the uh, vitriol that I want to get out there for today. Um, and again, it isn't to necessarily just to go on an attack or a rant. It's to point this out that this is a, a bad use of energy. It's not, I don't recommend it as a good use of people's energy. Go do something that's truly productive. Put this information out there for other people. That's the reason why things aren't changing fast enough. You're spending time nitpicking on stuff instead of putting information out there for people. I don't even care if you don't have it all right. You can go and edit it later. You can go and say later, after I put this out, I reevaluated it. I no longer think this. I can go back and say, hey, information in podcast, whatever, number, whatever. I didn't have this right. Please accept my apologies that I put out bad information. And here's my change. Here's my revision. You could always do that. You know, I feel like I waited too long to even start talking. I've said this before in the past. I, I sat on this knowledge for a while, doing nothing until someone shook me out of that with vitriol, with harsh words, not with saying, it's okay that you're doing that and not really speaking and you know all of this and you're doing nothing. No, they said, hey, what makes you think you can do that? What makes you think you have a right and that you don't carry your responsibility to put this out there for other people? That's how they said it to me. And I thank them for saying that to me like that. Pat from Virginia, who I may not have, I probably would have eventually, you know, woken up into action, but it may not have been for another couple of years if that person didn't just say that to me in a vitriolic way. So I think that's great. And she might not even think it was a vitriolic way, whatever. You know, I would say it wasn't at least pleasing to make me think that to stay comfortable in thinking I was doing the right thing because I wasn't. Silence is not the right thing. And anybody that's an armchair quarterback who's staying silent, you're not helping. You're hurting the war effort, the spiritual war that's going on. So that's really all I want to say on that topic. Um, I want to I want to end the show today by um with two things and people will people will probably think the first thing that i'm going to say is leave leaving on a negative note I'll, I'll leave on a more positive note by playing the video that i had suggested for people that was recommended to me from bob from cincinnati the first thing i want to say is people will ask me do you have any hope for humanity do you have any hope for our situation the answer to that is largely no, I, I don't have much hope, but it's not 100% gone. There is a tiny, tiny bit, and it's there for one reason and really one reason only. And it's not because I think humanity is intelligent, truly intelligent, or operating on any kind of holistic intelligence. It's not because I think that they care, you know, because uh, they have developed a lot of care and want and desire to know it's not because I think that they're um, have so much courage and they're getting ready to stand up for their rights it's not because I think that they know what rights really are it's not because I think that they want to do the right thing uh, I don't have hope for any of those reasons I don't have hope because people are you know have such a strong developed will and they're so ready to get involved and do something and make things happen. I have hope for none of those reasons. As a matter of fact, those things, I recognize that humanity is apathetic, they're ignorant, they're lazy, they're cowardly, and in a 
very, very huge proportion. There are more people who are non-activated, who are not, not intelligent, who are apathetic, who are not actually taking any real action that could help, help for the better than are. The, the proportion is staggering. Okay. Uh, you know, I would say if we have, if, if one tenth of 1% of people are aware and active, I would say that would be an encouraging sign. I don't think we're anywhere even close to that who really understand and are really doing something about it, who understand the call, the true causal factors, and then are actually trying to help other people to understand those true causal factors that are rooted in natural law. I would say it's far less than one tenth of 1% of the whole human population, far less than that. Maybe, maybe 0.05%, maybe. I'm being exceedingly generous, I think. And the fourth image is the reason that I have any hope at all. It's a chart that shows the gun ownership rate in the world. Worldwide gun ownership per 100 people. Average firearm ownership per 100 people. And if you look at the chart, America stands alone. And to me, it's one of the most beautiful visions and hopeful visions that I've seen in years, in years. And let me tell you something, folks. The only reason that the world is already not a 100% locked down totalitarian society, similar to or worse than Nazi Germany, Hitler's Germany, um, uh, Mao's China, Stalin's Russia, or any other wicked totalitarian regime that has ever existed in the world. The only reason that the world has not gotten to that place yet is because America has not yet been declawed and defanged by becoming disarmed. And as long as I draw breath, I'm going to continue to fight to preserve and actually enhance the level of firearms ownership that exists in the United States. And people will say, how could you consider yourself a spiritual teacher when you're te teaching people that firearms are good? Because I understand not only the non-aggression principle, I understand the second pillar that goes hand in hand in the synthesis of principles, the sacred feminine encapsulates the non-aggression principles of do not do harm to others, do not infringe upon their inherent natural rights. But the second pillar of principles is the self-defense principle, which means if someone is incurring, making incursions upon your natural rights, your life, your liberty, your property, you do possess inherently the natural right to use defensive force to protect your life, liberty, and property against those incursions. And no government, no matter how much they want to claim they have a monopoly on the use of force, they do not and do not ever possess the right to take that inherent right to self-defense away. We've talked about this ad infinitum on previous shows, and it will be, continue to be a theme that I reemphasize on future shows. But this is the only reason I have any hope for America, ladies and gentlemen. And let me tell you something. I would rather that those guns be in the hands of ignorant people than not be in the hands of people at all. That's how much I believe in the ownership of firearms. Because once you take away someone's defensive capability, you own them. You own them. You could do what you want with them. And that's why the government is making these intrusions. As soon as a government even starts trying to take away the citizens' prote protection against encroachment of tyranny, as soon as they try to take away that capability or start making inroads on taking away that capability in any way, in any form, th those are the conditions that are ripe for tyranny. And you can guarantee they're getting ready to go hot with that tyranny. And this is what's happening in the United States today. And we have people nitpicking on researchers, on different researchers.
still talking about, you know, is the Federal Reserve private or how much of our tax money gets paid to them ver or w word etymologies or meanings of symbols when they're trying to take the firearms from the citizenry of America. This is happening now because they're trying to declaw and defang the last line of defense against tyranny. And people will say, oh, well, we could never fight back against this government anyway, even if they did go hot with tyranny. You don't think so? I beg to differ. And I'm telling you, the American military and whatever other military police forces they have in third world countries can't deal with that resistance. You don't think that angry American resistors can get the job done and put down a tyrannical regime quickly? Well, I would suggest that you're a little too brainwashed by the mass media and what, you know, the power that you think this government really does have. I don't care what kind of advanced weaponry they have. Good luck that's going to do against 80 million gun owners. Good luck with that. Wouldn't want to be on that side. Wouldn't want to be on that side of, of that war. Not saying that this might not, if it goes hot, if, if the tyranny goes hot and then a revolution has to go hot to, to suppress the tyranny. I'm not telling you there aren't going to be enormous casualties on both sides, but I'm telling you, I wouldn't want to be on the side of the people who try it here. I wouldn't want to be on the side of the people who would dare to try it here. So my, my, you know, the two words I have for them is Molan Labe. Try it. Try to come and get them. And I'll just wrap it up on that. That's the image that brings me hope. I, I, I look at that image every day because it's the only thing anymore that puts a smile on my face. And I hope people understand what I'm saying when I say that. So we'll end on that and um, I'll see everybody here when I see you. You know, I'll, I'll be um, putting out podcasts again on an irregular schedule. So just check the website. Um, and get involved. Just keep doing something. Don't just complain about other people and their work. Do something yourself. What's up today? Hi, yo. I don't, I don't really know. I mean, as an awake person, when you can't reach out to people, I mean, what, what are you supposed to do and how are we supposed to keep, keep our hopes up? I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's so depressing when you think of it. Yeah, it is because the conditioning on most people, when you see them and they can't look you in the eye or they think you're crazy, is because the condition has taken perfectly on them. And you're looking, you're looking at conditioned robots, really. And they'll turn on you, too. At the right time, they'll turn on you. Uh, but that's the perfect conditioning. The ones who are awake generally have always been awake or they've known something was wrong. And they can't be conditioned quite the same way. Uh, but you're in amongst most people where the conditioning has worked perfectly, and that's the problem. Uh, I've always said that the elite have a symbiosis uh, amongst the masses of people, the general mass of people, because the masses always look towards government to solve problems, even if it's a fake problem put out by the government. They, 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 we immediately run to help us, save us, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, there's only very few people in between, in the middle, uh, who don't want to be stinking rich and, and rule everyone else's lives for them, and they don't want to belong to the general mob uh, that just goes and watches all the porn on their internet all day long, or ball games or whatever. Uh, so, so it's a small group really who don't belong in, in, in to either uh, camp. Uh, that's a problem. Because, because as I say, the masses have a symbiotic relationship with, with the elite, and eventually when they get all their agendas through, uh, the elite will turn around and say, we couldn't have done it without you to the masses. Yeah, and, and, and that's such a, I, I think it's disgusting, it, there's no other word for it, it's just mm -hmm. utterly disgusting. Yeah? It, it is, and it's very depressing until you realize uh, that uh, you, be, you might be surprised how many of those in between who are not brainwashed or conditioned and who don't seek personal power uh, can still have a voice and start changing things around. And that's the only hope that we have is, is to postpone it at least a, a long enough. They'll either wither away or they'll come out with an even heavier hand 
and for and then but that's when the, even the masses start to see it uh, and they know something's wrong when the heavy hand of the monster comes upon them and uh, and that's what it might take if you can stall it, their timetables they get awfully angry and they start using force uh, and uh, force is, is at least the use of force uh, terrifies the public and maybe even to waking up a little bit and that's all we can really hope for is because it's too perfect it's been here too long is this system so we, but we 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 cannot use violence and force no they're, they're, they're so perfectly good at, at getting us to kill each other or fight each other this has been a strategy for centuries, and uh, it's a perfect art of how to get it all going. Uh, we can't use that at all, and, uh, uh, but this, by the same token, we have to make sure uh, that the elites don't c come out with a heavy hand and start using open force on the general public. H here's the thing, too. They have been using force, uh, or at least uh, 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 deadly intentions, on the general public because they know what, how they've been dumbing us down. They know, when they rob your mind, this is the same as killing you. And when they inject things into you too, that make the autism bloom, and it also makes everyone uh, quite a few points lower in the IQ scale, makes us all sick so that we'll die off early, infertile, etc. They are physically, uh, literally, this is a targeting, this is a murder, a, murder a, a murderous rampage has been going on for a long time under the usual covert actions of the United Nations that always deny what they're doing. One of the top players in, in this who wrote about it, who taught Rhodes Scholars back in the, the 40s and 30s, internationalist again, uh, who spoke, by the way, so he made a great speech in Sweden, it was um, Toynbee. There were two Toynbees, father and son, and one took over from the other. But they, they literally taught the Rhodes Scholars for internationalism just, and just they penetrate them, all God. governments and push them towards internationalism. He said, we always deny with our mouths what our, what our hands are doing. And that was to become the mantra from, for every organization within the United Nations. We always deny with our mouths what our hands are doing. And, and that's, that's still their strategy to do. Respect the elderly mother.